Our gospel reading for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, is found in the Gospel of John, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. As was the case last week, this reading is so long that I invite all to be seated. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's glory might be revealed in him. A timely detour is advised. The disciples' question here about sin and suffering goes back to a biblical principle which we learned in Catechism. The biblical principle is found in Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5. And Luther's small catechism required that we memorize it for understanding the motivation for heeding the Ten Commandments. For the Lord your God is a jealous God, punishing children for the sins of their parents to the third and fourth generations. Now, this is a rather harsh verse, in many ways difficult to comprehend, but one that many of us remember from catechism. Without going into detail, some have argued that the universe keeps score and that what goes around comes around. In my opinion, the more serious flaw in this ointment has to do with the idea that sickness and suffering are signs that God is displeased or that God punishes us for sins committed. The cross of Christ exposed all this as false as having nothing to do with the God of grace whom Jesus was sent to serve. The God whose love Jesus' life and death reveal. The cross of Christ is, in fact, and in faith, the definitive response to what's wrong with this conventional view that suffering and sickness are signs of God's displeasure or judgment. Anyway, let's get back to our gospel reading. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors knew this man as a boy and as a beggar and began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, of course it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone who looks like him. <laughs> he was right there and kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? He said, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is that man? He said, I don't know where he is, but I'm right here. And while I once was blind, now I see. So they brought this man, who had formerly been blind, born blind, to the Pharisees. And wouldn't you know it, as it happened, it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Jesus had been actively acting on the Sabbath. So the Pharisees began to look into this matter further and asked how he had received his sight, asking if there had been any active acting going on, so to speak, on the Sabbath. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, now I see. Some Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe our Sabbath rules. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner like us perform such signs? They were divided. So they questioned the blind man again. What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. 
He said, to me, he must be a prophet. Now, the Pharisee did not really pay much attention when he was just a beggar. And they didn't believe that he had been born blind and received his sight just recently. So they called in the parents of the man who had received his sight for questioning. Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees, and we know nothing about who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He may have been born blind, but he is more than willing to speak for himself. His parents said this because they began to see that the Pharisees were not bringing people in for questioning to find out what happened, but to determine whom to blame. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That's why his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So for a second time, they called the man who had been born blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that I was blind, but now I see they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already, and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Are you looking to become one of his followers? But they shot back, you are his follower. We are followers of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. Even a poor and blind beggar knows that God does not listen to ordinary sinners. But he does listen to those who worship him and obey his will. Never since the world began, at least as far as we know in this small village, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born blind and entirely in sin, and you are trying to teach us? We are the teachers. And they drove him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard that they had driven him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus then said to him, I came to this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who think that they see may realize how blind they have become. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely you don't mean that we're the blind ones. And Jesus said to them, If you were the blind ones, then you wouldn't bear the sin of being fully blameworthy. But since you claim we see, your sin is undeniable. Again, a comment. The point here is that the blind cannot be held accountable for what they don't see. But the fact is that the Pharisees claim to have insight into the will of God. And now Jesus stands right there in front of them, the word of God incarnate, the will of God active in love, the love of God graciously given and fully extended in fulfillment of all that God has promised. And their response was to punish the man who was blessed, as well as the man who blessed him. Rather than to rejoice with him, they conspire against the one who came that they might have life, new life, true life. This, my friends, is the gospel of our Lord to which all God's people are invited to respond by simply saying, Praise to you, 